So just a couple of things. Obviously, um, you know, with, with the injuries and some of the stuff following up for Monday, um, we should have Elijah practicing, which is, which is encouraging. Uh, doesn't mean he'll play, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Uh, to hopefully get his clock started coming back. Um, Kyle had his procedure yesterday. You'll not see him the rest of this year. Um, nothing that concerns us going into the 23. But uh, so that's kind of where we're at with that. TQ, uh, I'll have an update you know, later this afternoon, see how his, his uh, procedure goes. And then uh, the one guy that was from last week that was questionable that um, will not be at practice today will be Jalen Dalton. Everybody else will be back out, back out of practice, and we'll just have to see how the week goes. Uh, as far as Kyle goes, was the anticipation always that he was potentially going to be out for the year, or did well, you know he was going to be close, and he just needed to let the experts and you know you get the best in the world to do uh, get their advice and their opinion, and uh, that that was what you're waiting for until you examine it, and if you're going to have uh, any kind of operation done, you don't know until. So they get in there, so that's why. And just to be clear, when you say off season, do you mean like the start of OTAs or are you looking more at the start of training camp? So have to see. Like, but nothing that concerns us for real real uh, games in, when the season. Did you say what the procedure was? Like, like was it like a knee scoping or? I'll let him speak on that. I'll keep those guys' information private. If they want to speak, post, tweet, do a TikTok about it, that's on them. Give you a, a timeline, and, and that's that's the best I can do. In terms of uh, Jalen Mayfield, I know this is this yeah, is kind of it is like, it is. How do you like? How, I guess how much goes into play his progress versus maybe what else you have at left guard because that's been a no, it's more tackle. It, it's, it comes down to his progress and what's best for his you know his situation. Uh, for this season in his career, and you're just kind of assessing and appreciate him. You know, as he's getting <clears throat> working back from the back injury, just kind of see where it is. You know, his core strength and how effective he could be in a real NFL game. That's what we gotta we gotta be able to see. And with him, he's been working. It seems like a tackle. A bit. Is he, That's is out of necessity. Just but yeah, because we've had a couple of injuries last week. You know, and obviously Jalen played guard for us, played tackle in college. You know, you need that versatility if you're not a starting lineman in this league. And if you're not starting right now, for sure. And then a lot of that, uh, Mike, it just out of necessity, just because of the numbers you get down late in the year. And, you know, Chumo was dealing with something last week and um, just short numbers. So guys have to play multiple spots. Like, I guess what I was asking is do, do you all still envision him mostly as a guard or is like he maybe? Yeah, I mean, and then we'll obviously see where our roster's at uh, in the spring if something were to change next year. But for this season, it would be more interior. When you are kind of thinking about his progression, how much of it goes into like the overall conditioning of alignment and how different that is? You know, it's not just like running around and getting conditioned, no. but having a, a different type of conditioning for alignment. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to that. You know, when you've missed a significant amount of time, and um, yeah, I mean, there's a, those those reps you can't uh, replicate no matter how what kind of you know PT you're doing. And again, you got to assess: is can you function through? 65, 70 snaps in an NFL game, uh, hold up in protection, you know, run blocking, all that stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, and obviously, it, most important is his health, where he's at. What have you seen from the uh, rookie receiver George Pickens on the table? What challenges does he present you guys? Yeah, talented player. Made a big play there tonight, <clears throat> right there on the sideline. Uh, pick it through to him. Um, physical player. Uh, they got a good, you know, they got a good group of skill players. So it, it'll be a challenge and. Uh, Certainly, he's somebody that you can see that Kenny Pickett's getting comfortable uh, throwing, throwing to and somebody you got to account for. You mentioned the other day being on the Redskins team that I think you said won five consecutive to, to make a playoff push. Yeah, it's four. Yeah. four. I was curious if there's, you've gone back and thought about that winning streak and anything you've learned that you're trying to apply now to the end of this season to try to get your team into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, you know, there's lessons learned, you know, on the flip side, whether, you know, you've been a part of things is you come out of the gate strong and then there's a late season collapse or in that situation obviously that was uh, so unique you know dealing with tragedy and uh, where football really seemed trivial at the time but 
obviously going back to that football analogy where, where we were and, you know, as these games get late in the season, I mean, they just, it came down, all of them came down pretty much to the end. Um, certainly the one we had, to, the first one you got to get, and then uh, just kind of momentum carried from there. So there's a lot of things that lessons learned, but also just the reality with five games and you're kind of still in the middle of that pack, or not really in the middle of the pack, but you still got a chance that um, that perspective. So even if you feel like you're down two games, like reality is if you can just, and you, nothing's more important than this one, you can get the first one, uh, unique situation to have this late of a bye, and you got a whole quarter left. So that's that's why they're all important, but the, the reality of where we're at situationally and the opportunity available is uh, unique in my opinion. Talk about how much the rookie, obviously when you drafted this rookie class knew how much they of a role they were going to play pretty early in their rookie years, but a guy like Arnold Evichetti, I know he's working through that arm mm -hmm. thing, but how much does he kind of epitomize the, the growth of yeah. there's a guy you needed to start early and kind of where he is now? Yeah, I mean, he's a lot of, taking a lot of valuable reps. He's made some key plays at times, um, doing a decent job. I mean, he's got a pretty high percentage of pressure on the quarterback. Um, not necessarily, you know, that's why sometimes sacks can be misleading. You love to have sacks, don't get me wrong, but just affecting the quarterback, can you move him off the spot? So um, he's gotten better every week, and uh, we're happy he's here, you know. But same thing with D'Angelo. The more he plays, you can see his progress, the, the things he does game, week in, week out. When it comes to good outside linebackers, edge rushers, I mean, what is kind of a, a key marker of their progress that, that you see when you kind of – not just with AK and D'Angelo, but I guess just that position as a whole. Yeah, it just depends on the, you know, the, the call and the scheme because that job, if you're in base defense as you're definitely an outside linebacker, you're really an edge player. Whether you're going four down or five down and, and can you hold the point? Um, obviously in the run game, you know, most times you're, that's what you're doing is you're trying to can contain. You're going to be matched up on open side tackles and tight ends. Um, can you set the edge? in the run game. And then obviously, depending on your your plan and the pass rush, depending on the week, what you're trying to attack, can they operate uh, in the rush? You know, they're a guy that just runs up the field, creates lanes for a lot of mobile quarterbacks, which you see happen a lot in this league. Can they be disciplined? Can they know how to set people up and pick games? And then ultimately, can they win one-on-one -on -one when they get the straight rush? So that's those are all the things that go into it, the job description of it, and uh, can they handle the call? So if you're, you know, dropping guys and you know, that's not the most normal thing they do, but you got to be able to do it if you're going to bring pressure and you're going to play that kind of defense. And so there's a lot black to it. And uh, both those guys, are, there's a lot on their plate, and they, they both contributed in, in a positive way. And so hopefully we keep that going. You've played with a lot of rookies, whether it's due to necessity or talent, mm -hmm. last couple of years, and you've talked a lot about plans for players when you draft. Sure. How, how do you square or how, what goes into – the plan that you maybe have versus the necessity or, or need of, of yeah. playing a guy because uh, you know when you because you have to yeah. yeah I mean it happened to Mayfield last year right with Josh Andrews breaking his hand the Wednesday of Week One so yeah so sometimes you got a great plan and uh, and you have to adapt and so that's what you try to do to have contingency plans and uh, sometimes it works out like I like Richie and then other times uh, with, you know same thing with Troy right now. Trending in the right direction, but like you're right, sometimes guys get thrown into the fire, and that's all you got. So, uh, and you try to manage that. You may try to protect them, certain calls, and certainly uh, at some point you're going to have a hard matchup, no matter how you try to protect them. But that's what you're trying to get them ready for. Make sure that they're contributing, trying to help you win, build their confidence. There is some psychology that goes into it as well. Or disadvantages is it for you game planning going up against a rookie quarterback like Kenny Pickett? Well, I mean, he's played a good number of snaps. You know, obviously you saw Monday night when they were able to, to get the lead and, and keep it keep it balanced. Uh, he's just a very smart player. So you can see that growth. I and mean, there's a lot of things that happen. I think the thing that goes unnoticed is how different these pockets are from college. That's the thing you never can replicate or damn near impossible to replicate in practice. That's where the game's so different. The amount of time and the, and the and the pressure players you have in this league and how condensed those pockets are and people at your feet all the time, how you adjust. It's easy to throw when nobody's at your feet, like, and so that's where the game is so different, in my personal opinion, from college to the NFL. Yeah. 
Now that, going back to Kyle for a second, now that he's officially done for the year, how do you assess what he did in year two? Yeah, I mean, they're very different years. Uh, but going back to that, you know, like I said, I mean, he had obviously bigger statistical numbers in the passing game a year ago. We were a much different team in a different place where you saw a lot of growth and a lot of other jobs we asked him to do. Um, certainly, there's some things you, you wish would have gone different. I mean, that's probably every year. But you can see that growth as a player as he's become a more complete player. And uh, I, I'd say the best thing is, is, Mike, is you're not wishing it open. You know he's done it. And you know he's made other gains in different areas of, of what we've asked him to do. So you're very confident and positive about where his future, you know, predicting the future. Now, you can't predict everything, but you're, you've got evidence. And he's made so much growth. And he's such an impactful player, whether he touches the ball or doesn't. And being able to run behind him this year and, and some really efficient runs. And also, too, and even on some of the actions where he's asked to block, where they're not just assuming that he's getting out. And I mean, it just makes it where, as he continues to build, and the Kyle's only 22. And you see this happen in other professional sports. I've given the example. You've seen the, you know, the last two NBA MVPs. People try to huge expectations, and they let them come along, and they become really dominant players and at a, at a really hard position in what we ask out of that position as well. And uh, so we're very pleased with his progress. Is, is there, and this might sound weird, I don't know, but do you ask more from your tight ends than maybe some other schemes? Probably. I mean, the other thing we ask him to do, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I just, you know, that's a, so you're study all 32 in the off season for you, but you know, you obviously watch a lot of different films and different things, and there's a lot of, so it makes this game interesting. It'd be boring if everybody's trying to do the same thing. Coach, just generically, what does the uh, Pittsburgh defense um, kind of challenges for your offense as you go? Yeah, I mean, they've got a, uh, some good veteran players on that front. You know, Cam Hayward has had as good a career as anybody in a. Up there in a long list of, you know, right since Chuck Noll got that thing going, and uh, and they've had some damn good defenders up there, and that's a one of the highest praises I could probably give, whether it matters or not, coming from me. But that's why I got a lot of respect for Cam Hayward, what he does, uh, anchoring the interior. Obviously, T.J. Watt, really good player. Tell you know, coming back, playing through that pec injury, and uh, still effective rusher. A really good player, and then you got two pretty savvy inside linebackers, Devin Bush and uh, Miles Jack, pretty familiar with from his years in Jacksonville. And then that third level, Minka is as good as anybody, the free safety in the league. Edmonds, those guys, they do a nice job. So, you know, it's you see a lot of the stuff that you blink, and it was 15 years ago, whether it was Kiesel and Casey Hampton and Aaron Smith and Lamar Woodley, and you got these, this group of guys now, there's a, there's a standard in Pittsburgh. and. Uh, that's why I have so much respect for Mike Tomlin and what he's done. And that guy I've looked up to this profession that's sustained a lot of success there. Anybody else? Any thoughts on my calls, my cleats, the guys wearing cleats? Seen the name of them? I mean, I've saw the list. I think it's, it's awesome what they're doing. So, uh, just, you know, one thing, it, you know, guys are passionate about it. And I think it's, uh, I think it's cool because it's on an individual basis because you're never going to have a group of people that, you know, everybody, it allows them things they're passionate about. To, to bring awareness to, I think, is a positive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anybody's uh, showing up to, to worry about what I'm wearing. <laughs> I had probably guys in this league that think that that, that uh, get all dolled up on the sideline. But I'm just trying to co I'm just trying to coach football. <laughs>